hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel if you are new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe and if you're a subscriber already thank you for coming back and also please don't forget to comment don't forget to share don't forget to like so on this channel for those that are new I talk about real crimes that have happened in Zimbabwe, outside Zimbabwe, anyway and everywhere Africans are thriving, but mostly um, Zimbabweans. And just as a disclaimer, everything that I talk about on this channel is already in the public domain. I do not make up these stories. I love telling stories, but I don't make them up. Everything that I talk about is already in the public domain. Okay, that is just my disclaimer right there. In summer over here, and it's really, really hot. Like summer just set in beginning of June, and it's already like super hot. I don't know how we are going to survive the rest of summer. But anyway, yeah, it is well. So in today's video, I want us to talk about the last people, or the, at least the last documented people that were executed in the Republic of Zimbabwe. I understand when I uh, did my research that some sources said that the last executions were done in 2005, but I couldn't find the names of the people that were executed in 2005. In 2005. I could only find the names of the people that were executed in 2002. Chidumo and Masenteke. Now let's just do a brief back check on the capital punishment, also known as the death penalty in Zimbabwe. I'm going to talk about pre-independent Zimbabwe and post-independent Zimbabwe. So in pre-independent Zimbabwe, when Zimbabwe was still Rhodesia and it was being run by uh, Ian Smith, who allegedly, or at least who claimed to have loyalty to the crown okay so it was basically that he was saying he actually reported or at least he took orders from britain okay so the first executions in rhodesia present day zimbabwe were done in 1968. now these were two excuse me <coughs> Excuse me. So these were two people that had um, been charged and found guilty of murder. They they were said to have committed uh, murder in 1964. They were only executed in 1968. These were the first people to be executed in Rhodesia, and this brought a lot of bad light on the country. And um, the house of the Com of the, ha the house of common was not happy about it. And um, obviously, the international community was not happy about that because for, for so many years, actually, the death penalty has been regarded as something that is immoral. But yeah, Smith went ahead and he did that. Not only did he do that, but he also went on to make uh, the, pen, the capital punishment into law. And a lot of things were now being grouped as um, offenses that were uh, punished punishable by death. This included murder. This included um, bumping of uh, places that could destabilize the economy. Uh, that also, they also included being found in possession of any ammunition that could uh, lead to a war. These crimes also included recruiting people to go and be trained as guerrillas. This also, um, under the capital punishment also, was anything that was regarded as a being an uprise against the government. You, do, it, you didn't have to be found, or if, let's say they find you in possession of firearm, you didn't have to have used it. It didn't matter that you didn't kill anybody. You did not use it. No, just the fact that you were found with the ammunition, you would be sent to the, uh, to the gallows. Just the fact that you bombed something, maybe a stationary vehicle with nobody inside, you were going to be hanged. 
just the fact that you were found walking with some youngsters crossing the border into Mozambique. It doesn't matter if they were relatives that you're trying to flee the country with, you were regarded as somebody who was recruiting for war and you were sent, you were sent to the gallows. Okay. Now, the international community was obviously not happy about this, and then that brought about uh, sanctions upon uh, the Ian Smith regime. And now, talking about bombing something, in 1965, something happened. In 1965, um, the current president of Zimbabwe, Emerson Dambozo Monangagwa, was actually charged for bombing a train station in Mutare. Okay. Now, there is... A narrative that he was, he escaped the news the hangman's news because he was under age right that is the narrative that i've heard for so many years however that narrative has since been disputed by professor jonathan moyo now i'm not even sure if it's about sour grapes or if it's the truth but it turns out that in 2021 professor jonathan moyo said that that narrative was wrong that narrative was just something that um ED was using to try and run away from the death penalty. And it is said that they actually came across the court records for his case. And these court records had gone missing for a long time, but for some reason they were found in Ed Cross's possession. Okay? Now I'm not sure if these court documents were actually real or if they were cooked up. I don't know. I don't know if, he's, if Professor Jonathan Moyes' narrative is correct or if it is just an issue of sour grapes, I do not know. But, yeah, it is, the one thing that is certain is that E.D. bombed a train station in 1965. That was him retaliating against the regime, just like most of the people his age were doing, right? They were trying to just sabotage the regime, trying to uh, make the, at least the regime listen to their um, demands for equality their demands for them to be able to exercise their rights as citizens of the country right but according to the records he was actually sentenced to 10 years and after serving his term he was deported to zambia why because his address that was given in court was blah 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 zambia okay so he was deported to zambia after serving his sentence so yeah however if that is the reason why he is against the death penalty, it makes a lot of sense, right? It just makes sense. So anyway, he escaped the death penalty. But four people that were found guilty of murder in 19... A murder committed in 1964 were actually executed in 1968. That was the first execution in uh, pre-independent Zimbabwe, which was known as Rhodesia by then. And these executions continued. We are still talking about pre-independence in law, but the executions continued because now they covered a lot of crimes. That meant a lot of people would be executed. So each time they would do an execution, they would actually announce to the, to the world that they're executing blah, 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 because they did A, B, C, D. But now it started painting a really bad image on the regime. So they decided that from now on, executions would be done privately. No one would announce executions. Can you imagine how many people died? A lot of people were killed. A lot of people were executed. And it was actually, the way the law was structured was such that you were guilty until proven innocent. You had to prove that you were innocent. Other than that, you would be sent to be hanged so that was quite difficult anyway uh this law continued and uh, the international community was not happy about it uh the, the the africans as they were called the africans were also not happy about it but did the africans drop this law after they they came into power no they did not rather they continued with that same law that they didn't like now post-independent Zimbabwe, the death penalty continued, the capital punishment continued, and the first execution was done in 1982. Zimbabwe got it, its independence in 1980. In 1982, the first executions were carried out. 
Now, these people were regarded as dissidents. Yeah, and they were executed. And again, the international community gave an outcry, like, why are you doing this? I, we thought you were against this when the Smith regime was running the country. Now you have taken over the country and you're continuing with the same barbaric actions. Why are you doing that? But here is one thing that is certain. Ever since E.D. became um, politically influential, he always spoke against the executing of people. He spoke against the death penalty. Right. Now, what, what makes me sad about this death penalty thing is that, um, you know, we hear so many stories of people being executed for something that they didn't do in Japan, in the US. What about in Zimbabwe, where we don't have a lot of resources? Isn't it possible that some people actually got executed for things that they didn't do? Maybe then it makes sense why people should not be executed. People should just be given maybe a life term and then maybe along the way the truth will come out. I do not know. What do you guys think? Anyway, after 1982, a number of executions were done, a number of executions were carried out. But the one that was documented, that was documented as the last execution that I found was that of Chidumo and Masendeke. <sighs> the two brothers in crime, right? But before they, uh, okay, uh, after they were executed, a lot of changes were done to the law, but still it stayed in place, right? So why were Chidumo and Masendeke executed? Let's talk about those two. Okay, so first let's talk about Stephen Chidumo. Stephen Chidumo was born in Zaka to his father, uh, Danda Chidumo, who was also a headman, Sabuk, and a businessman. But it is said that um, his father denied paternity of him as a young boy. So he was raised by his grandma, his grandma on the maternal side. And then after he went, he went to school up to grade six and then he dropped out and he went to stay with his aunt, Koblawayo. And then in Oblawayo, um, uh, Stephen Chidumo started uh, engaging in petty crime and he grew up and the crimes also grew with him. You know, they, 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 his criminal nature grew up with him. Then in 1991, Chidumo was actually uh, arrested and found guilty in uh, Blawayo for car theft. He was sentenced to four years in prison. After he was released, he went back to stay with his aunt and he did a lot of bad things. He did a lot of crimes. And then eventually in 1995, he did a lot of robbery, rape, um, probably attempted murder. Like he did a lot of bad things. He was just a bad boy. In 1995, he was arrested and uh, he escaped police custody in Blauayo. Like, yeah, that's how bad he was. So he escaped and then after he was recaptured, he was sent to Mutimurefu prison in Mashingo where he was serving a 16 year sentence. There he met his friend, Masendeke. And so who was Masendeke? Edmund Masenteke was born and raised in Kwekwe. He was a son of a businessman. His father was an, a, an entrepreneur and a polygamist. He was said to have over 20 children and several women. So it is said that his father was very abusive. When he was young, he used to be beaten up a lot. His father would beat up the children a lot. But also, Masenteke was a bully in his young life he was a bully he was yeah he was abusing other children in school anyway in 1995 masendeke was arrested in mashingo and charged with murder he murdered a woman and stole her car so he was convicted and he was sent to motimurefu prison where he met his friend steven shidumo in 1995 November, they planned to escape Motimurefu prison and they went away with um, four other men 
that are actually in 1995 november when they escaped they escaped with three other men that is langton zano langton charumbira and jameson masar mas musara they left the country they went to mozambique where again they did a lot of robbery a lot of um attempted murders and probably murders as well who knows they did a lot of bad things and um they were eventually arrested in 1997 actually chiduma was arrested in 1997 and masindike managed to escape in 1997 chiduma managed to escape from um Harare, uh, sorry, from Chikurubi Maximum Prison, and he rejoined Masendeke in Mozambique, and then they continued with their life of crime there. So there was a reward that was put out there to get uh, to try and uh, the, to to try and uh, convince the public to help in the arrest of. Chidumo and Masendeke. $60,000 was actually the reward that was going to be given to anybody who would have information that would lead to the arrest of the two. So they were eventually caught in 1997 in Mozambique. They were both arrested and brought back to Zimbabwe. The operation was dubbed Operation Chidumo and he was only able to stay free for just 29 days before he was brought back because now there was a reward people were really determined to make sure that he comes back and you know like they i, I remember we were growing up then and i would hear stories like people saying oh chidumo has been cited in this place the next thing oh he was cited in this place the next thing he was cited in this place because now there was a reward there people just had to talk about it people just had to pass the information on back then there were no cell phones but somehow the information got to the police and they were arrested. So on their return to Zimbabwe, Masendeke was aged 23 and he pled guilty to 38 charges of different things ranging from murder, attempted murder, rape, robbery, you know, and other petty crimes, car theft. He had a lot. He actually pled guilty to 38 charges of something 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 different things and Masendeke was also found guilty of his own share of the crimes murder rape attempted murder robbery uh, carjacking like a lot of things that they had done they were both sentenced to death by hanging and now there are two sources that talk about the dates the dates of uh, execution one source says that they were executed in february of 2002 and another source says that they were executed on the 31st of may 2002 now from what i've read these were the last documented executions in zimbabwe i don't know if there are other people of course there is another source that says the last uh execution was done in 2005 and then there is a document there is a source that says that the hangman then retired in 2006. After that, nobody has taken up the job. However, there were a good 81 people sitting on the death row in Zimbabwe um, as of 2013. And Amnesty International was crying out that probably we just need to drop the death penalty in 2000 and i think it was 2013 or so when some people were touring the prison and some journalists were there journalists asked about the death penalty and asked about why they were, the death penalty was not being carried out and for some reason the prisoner the prison um top official announced that they'd actually found the hangman they had actually hired somebody to be a hangman and again that brought a lot of fear to the people because now we are worried that oh so those executions are now going to be carried out but the truth is they were never carried out now we don't know if indeed somebody had signed up for the job or if it was just talk you know media talk but anyway, in 2021, 
some people that had been sitting on the death row for some time, like five people actually benefited from the president's from the presidential amnesty. Five people. They were not only released from their death penalty, but they were also released from prison. They were actually set free after sitting on the death row for more than 20 years. Okay? And then the people that were sitting on the death row, their charges or rather their sentences were reduced to life. I, pr I think it, it's life with a possibility of pardon. Possibility of pardon, right? Right. So probably we can say there are no people sitting on the death row in Zimbabwe now. Now my question is, why are we still having the death row if people, well, sorry, why are we still having the death penalty? Why are we still having capital punishment as a, as a law? Why are we not changing it, that law to actually abolish capital punishment? In 2013, however, the constitution was changed Remember I said there were a lot of issues that were being uh, that were being covered by the capital punishment. Now, in 2013, I'm not sure if the new constitution after independence adopted all those things, but I'm sure they dropped uh, quite a number of things, right? I'm sure a, a number of things were dropped because they were just there to punish the Africans. So I'm sure when the Africans came into power, they dropped some of, they actually kind of tailor-made that part of the constitution to suit the African community. And in 2013, the law was further trimmed. What is covered under the capital punishment was further trimmed. For starters, women cannot be executed in Zimbabwe. Number two, Men under the age of 21 can no longer be executed in Zimbabwe. Men over the age of 70 can no longer be executed in Zimbabwe. And lastly, what, is, what carries the death penalty is murder. Murder with aggregation. I don't even know what that means. Like, who, this law is said to be very vague. Like, who decides that, okay, here there was, um, there was what? Okay, initially I knew that murder during a robbery is said to be death penalty. So I'm thinking that's what it means right now. But I'm saying who defines that this is premeditated murder or this is murder as a result of something gone wrong, like a robbery gone wrong. Murder in the process of a robbery is definitely a death penalty. But who decides that at this point, okay, this stops. This is going to go for the death penalty. This one, mm, okay, let's just leave it at murder. Like, I don't know, law people, explain to me, explain to me. What I only got to understand is that if a murder is committed during a robbery, then that constitutes, um, that will only get somebody a death penalty. But what else, with what other murder gets somebody the death penalty? And my question still remains, we haven't been executing people since 2002 or 2005. Why do we still have it as a law? In 2013, actually, no, in 2015, Amnesty International said that Zimbabwe had reached a milestone of going for 10 years without executing somebody. Surely Zimbabwe does not need the death penalty as part of its constitution. They surely need to abolish the death penalty. If we have gone for so long without executing anybody, why do we still have that penalty on our constitution? Do we really need it? The last time that uh, uh, people were asked about the death penalty, it is said that at first, like 80% of the people were saying no more death penalty. We don't want the death penalty anymore. It's inhuman. It's, you know, it's degrading. It's, 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 it's. Then the next time that um, uh, this information was gathered again, it was only found that only 14% of the people were agreeing to the death penalty under certain conditions, right? only 14%, meaning that now we actually have an 
of the population that was interviewed saying no to death penalty. So why do we still have it in our constitution? Do we really need it? That is it does it correct, does it change people's minds about crime? Does it make people think twice before they do the crime? Does it rehabilitate people? Do we need the death penalty in Zimbabwe? If indeed the last execution was done in 2005, we are in 2022, almost two decades later, and we still have the death penalty. We still have people sitting on the, no, no, we don't have people sitting on the death row anymore. But why do we still need that? Is there somebody who's hoping that maybe they can use it one day? Is it a provisional law that people hope one day, if somebody crosses them, they can use it? Are we being transparent here? Legislators, are we being transparent with the people? What are we doing as a nation? Do we need the death penalty in Zimbabwe? Do comment down below, guys. What do you think? What do you think? about the death penalty yes it goes a long way back it started in 1960 okay at least the first executions were done in 1968 and the last executions were done in 2002 or 2005 i am not sure now that shows that pre-independent zimbabwe post-independent zimbabwe the death penalty has always been there but do we need it now 2022 do we need it do comment down below guys tell me what you think and also I didn't go much into the crimes that Masendeke and Shidumo did because this video was really, really not about what Masendeke and Shidumo did. It was really about me questioning the importance of the death penalty in our country and whether we really need it or not. Okay, so that's why I tried to go back to the history of the death penalty and the last known executions that were done in Zimbabwe. Comment down below what you think. I really like to hear your comments. I really like to hear what you have to say about the death penalty in Zimbabwe. Should we abolish it? Should we keep it? Do we really need it? Are, are the legislators being transparent with us right now? Why do they still have it if they're not using it? Are they hoping to pull it out of their sleeve one day and use it on somebody? Hmm. I do not know guys but yeah that's the video of the day thank you so much for watching if you're a new subscriber please don't forget to share if you're an old subscriber please don't forget to share I will be uploading my videos every Monday 10 o'clock uh, Harare Pretoria time 4 p.m. Beijing time every Monday because I am still quite busy but I think now that we're going into summer, we'll probably have a two months break and maybe I'll be able to do two videos a week or three videos a week, I'm not sure. But for this week, definitely there'll be two videos because I still have to post the part two of my vlog where I spent the day vlogging, uh, just showing you guys what I do in my job, what it's like to be an international teacher in school, or at least not what my life is like as an international teacher in China. So yeah, do look forward to that one. Please don't miss it. Turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss that one. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, do take care of yourselves. Do take care of your loved ones. Let's think deep. Let's keep the conversation going. Let's talk about the death penalty. Let's talk about, yeah, its effects. Does it serve a purpose? Does it deter crime? Does it uh, rehabilitate anybody? Let's talk about it. Let's get the conversation going. Thank you so much. Be safe. Keep your families safe. Do what you need to do to keep your families safe. And stay away from crime. Because if you do crime, you are most likely to do the time. Be blessed.